Our next speaker represents uh, an agency that provides a lot of behavioral health services throughout New York City and Long Island. The North Shore Long Island Jewish Health System provides multiple health services, including psychiatric services throughout Long Island and Queens. In particular, the Zucker Hillside Hospital in Queens is known for its pioneering work in diagnosis, treatment, and research of mental illness. Joining us to say a few words is Mr. Joseph Shulman, the Executive Director of the Zucker Hillside Hospital, together with Mr. Andrew Roberts, Director of Military and Veteran Services. Well, thank you, Jacob. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. What a glorious day. Wow. Very fortunate we have a day like this. And I have to say, this is quite a backdrop. Uh, usually speaking engagements don't have a backdrop that is this striking. And um, it's very uh, appropriate for what we're going to discuss today. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Jacob and the Talk Therapy Television team for, uh, for bringing this together. It's a very special event, and it's a very important event, uh, clearly. Uh, I'm Joseph Shulman. I'm the Executive Director of the Zucker Hillside Hospital, North Shore LIJ Health System. Uh, Zucker Hillside is the behavioral health flagship of North Shore LIJ, which also possesses a very large behavioral health uh, provider network uh, throughout all of the boroughs and uh, Nassau and Suffolk County. We have an unwavering commitment to care for uh, our communities. Populations in need, populations with specialized needs. Today, there's no question, and it's appropriate for this setting, that we discuss behavioral health services for those who serve and for uh, we need to serve those who have served our country so bravely. So our, they served our country and what's critically important is to specify the importance of family and how those their respective families serve this our country as well. I'm clearly humbled by, uh, by, Lester's, uh, by Lester's stories and uh, his contributions. I just want to talk a little bit about our Office of Military and Veterans Liaison Services. It's North Shore LIJ's Health and Wellness Resource Center for military service members and veterans and their families with strong emphasis on behavioral health. It's led by Andrew Roberts. Andy Roberts is the director of what we term OMVLS, and in Andy's capacity, he serves as the administrator of the Rosen Family Wellness Center and the project director for a soon-to-be-open Unified Family Behavioral Health Center, which is a joint endeavor with the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, and it's designed to provide collaborative care to veterans and critically important to their families. The Rosen Center that I earlier mentioned has been providing no-cost behavioral health care to military, law enforcement, veterans, and their families since 2006 to help them cope with the effects and to combat uh, of, uh, of combat and traumatic stress. Andy is also charged with developing programs, both internally and externally, for North Shore LIJ and for the community to continue uh, our commitment to care for military families and veterans. Andy, who you will speak in a moment, is a former deputy director of the New York State Division of Veterans Affairs. In his role, he was responsible for half of New York State's veterans programs and oversaw about 30 offices across New York State all of which are dedicated to connecting veterans to all, of all generations with their state and federal benefits. Prior to, uh, to Andy's appointment to the New York State Division of Veterans Affairs, he worked for the, uh, the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America, the IAVA, and their membership department. And at that IAVA, Andy worked to develop the membership and advocated for veterans on various media outlets across the country. A West Point graduate and former Army officer who deployed to Iraq from 2003, from 2003 to 2004, Andy served as a battery commander for over 90 American soldiers and also acted as the American liaison to the city of Balad Ruz in, in uh, Delia province near the Iranian border. It's my privilege, he's also to announce uh, and really introduce Andy. He's also the recipient of numerous awards and military awards, including the Bronze Star, and it's really a privilege to bring to you Andy Roberts to talk a little bit more about our service and his, and his story. Please welcome Andy. Uh, thank you very much, Joe. Uh, what an honor to be able to speak uh, right here at the Intrepid right behind me. Um, 
it's uh, such an honor. You know, I have to be honest, I am, a, as Joe pointed out, I'm a veteran, but I'm also, you know, I'm an Army veteran um, and also a West Point grad, so I still have to say I'm really hoping that Army is going to beat Navy in football this year, of course, okay? Um, but uh, if you work with veterans, which I've been doing for the last couple of years, it doesn't take very long to see that, that all members of all branches of the armed forces, male or female, and their families are making historic sacrifices to benefit our nation uh, right now. And it's why I feel so proud to have this opportunity to work for North, uh, North Shore LIJ Health System that has recognized these sacrifices. And they're taking action to serve those who have served us. Before I explain more about the efforts that I'm leading, I feel obligated to tell you the story of one day in Iraq that I personally experienced. That day was on October 13, 2003. It was exactly, you know, almost eight years ago to the day. Um, and on that day, I was sitting on a cot in, a, in Iraq in the middle of the desert near the Iranian border when one of my soldiers came in to my quarters explaining, Sir, Charlie Battery's under attack. We got to go. So I grabbed my uh, Kevlar helmet and my weapon and headed out headed out the door to see my soldiers already mounting their vehicles. They're loading heavy weapons up onto them. They're slapping magazines in their M16s, and uh, they're generally kicking up dust in a controlled chaos. I jumped into my uh, vehicle. I put the hand mic of the radio up to my ear and gave the command to start moving north because um, our brothers were under attack about five kilometers north of our position, and I quickly heard over the radio that they were taking fire. And my thought at the time was that this was a, this was a real deal. Uh, I had been in Iraq since April of 2003, so I'd been there a few months. Um, but this was the first time I really truly believed that I was about to face the enemy. We drove our Humvees as fast as we could up that road to make sure that uh, to rescue our, our friends that were under attack. And I heard over the radio already that one one soldier was KIA, and they were already taking fire. Um, and we were flying up that road. And at the time, I remember turning my, uh, the armored vest over to the right side of my body to protect myself because we didn't have doors on our Humvee at that time. So I was uh, very concerned that, you know, to at least shield the majority of my body to have the most of that, that armor over there. And I remember hoping that, you know, if I got hit, that it would be quick. And I was wondering if it would hurt. But I also remember wanting to yell pretty loudly because there's a huge adrenaline, adrenaline uh, boost that happens, which I figure is probably medically dangerous. Um, but I can say that it helps because I remember here I am with this euphoric, kind of like excited feeling driving somewhere that could potentially be my death. But when we came over, came over a rise in the road and I could see there was the Humvee that had been attacked. It was up on all four wheels, but it didn't look right. Um, as I got close, I could see there was something next to the Humvee and I quickly realized that it was, it was four American soldiers that were huddled together on the ground. And when I got there, I recognized there was a friend of mine, his arm was covered in blood. There was another friend of mine that was basically, uh, you know, seemed almost hysterical about what was going on. Um, and he jumped up, started firing over the Humvee, and I didn't know what was going on, so I was trying to, to, to find out. So uh, I recognized this other guy that was a major that I knew that was a good, you know, he was a friendly guy, he was this overweight, jolly kind of fellow, but he wasn't jolly on that day. Um, and he was just kept saying over and over again, these guys are trying to kill us, they're trying to kill us. So I had to grab him. I was like, sir, where is the enemy? He pointed over his shoulder. And so I directed my soldiers to start firing into kind of the middle of the desert. Um, I didn't see the enemy at that point. But uh, when I was telling my soldiers to start firing towards the enemy, I saw there was another soldier on the other side of the, uh, the Humvee. And he was exposed to the enemy, so we had to, we had to go get him. So I grabbed uh, my medic and another soldier. We ran out and we picked up, we picked up this uh, the soldier that wasn't moving, and he was very heavy. And uh, we grabbed him, carried him back to safety, and we laid him down uh, behind the Humvee. And I looked down at him, and his eyes were half open, and they were yellow. His skin was kind of yellow and waxy, um, but I could see his pupils. But I could also see there was this dust just on his forehead. And as I was looking at him, I looked up at my medic, who was also looking down at him. And I said, you know, Doc, you need to get to work. And he looked at me and he said, sir, he has a hole in his brain. And uh, I remember even then, I did not want to see that hole. I didn't want to look at it. I took his dog tags off his neck. I pushed his eyes closed. And I looked at his, his dog tags. His name is Stephen Eugene Wyatt. He's from Kilgore, Texas. And he died on October 13th, 
2003. The tension and the emotion of that event and others like it will remain seared into my memory. Many of us who survived war, as Civil War veteran Ambrose Bierce put it, sentenced to life. As bad as that day was, and others like it were for me, I can honestly say that the worst six months of my life were the six months after I came back from Iraq. And there's many others who have seen much more violence, much more bloodshed, and have endured much more than I have or ever will. And I consider myself lucky to only have had a few bad days, but I acknowledge that the anxiety of not knowing when death might strike next can, can affect even the strongest. Uh, there are gaps in services, and in order to bridge them, it's going to require the support of a community more than just support of the government. And that's what North Shore LIJ has recognized. It's very easy to say that veterans are somebody else's problem. It's much harder to say what can we do to help them. And this is what North Shore LIJ has done to help. Joe mentioned that I'm overseeing the Rosen Family Wellness Center, um, which was opened in 2006. And it's made a positive impact in the lives of thousands of law enforcement, and military personnel, and their families through no cost, confidential behav behavioral health services through active outreach and education programs. Today, we've served over 7,000 military veterans and their families. Um, thank you. In February of 2012, we're going to be opening uh, what we're calling the Unified Behavioral Health Center for Military Veterans and their families, which is a joint endeavor with the, the VA. The VA and North Shore LIJ will be under one roof. Um, the VA can treat the veterans. North Shore LIJ can treat their families. But there's going to be a shared space in the middle of that where we can come up with a uh, collaborative plan to treat families as a whole. Um, the center is going to be in Bay Shore, New York, and it acknowledges these sacrifices. It's going to maximize the strengths of North Shore LIJ and the VA in order to best serve those who serve us. We also support the active duty military at Fort Drum. I could go on about all these different programs. They're great, but just a, a few more things. Is, uh, we're providing, uh, neuro we've provided neuropsychological support to active duty veterans. We're looking into trying to uh, treat veterans through um, telemedicine, and we're also maybe providing uh, the active duty military base up there with a virtual reality system to assist the soldiers uh, with their treatment upon their return um, from war. We've got a great relationship with the Northport, Northport VA MC, uh, which is the Northport VA Medical Center, and uh, through our support with veterans, we've gained some credibility, and we'll, we may be soon helping them gain, to uh, bridge other gaps in care that exist. I've been inspired by the organization I work for, and it's music to my ears when I see how much support there is for the military and veterans and families at this, this organization. I think they should be an inspiration to others out there. I think I'm most proud of the commitment to serve families at North Shore LIJ, military families. It shows a clear understanding of the issues veterans face and a willingness to acknowledge their sacrifice, understand their condition, and step up for care for them. Care for the Marine, the soldier, the airman, and the sailor, and his or her family so when they come home, they can successfully reintegrate back into American life. Thank you very much.